What's going on, guys? Christopher Nolan's massive epic Interstellar is in theaters now. Whether you love it or you hate it, you gotta admit, there's a lot of science up in there. Today, we're bringing in our resident physicist, Dr. Clifford V. Johnson, to break down the science of Interstellar. Dr. Clifford V. Johnson, welcome back to Screen Junkies. It's a pleasure to be back. Oh, it's great to have you back. You always class up the joint. You're very kind. So, we're here today talking about Interstellar. Did you like the movie? I did. Let me ask you this. We're going to get into specifics, but how accurate was it? Well, that's sort of hard to say because there's some real science in there that seems crazy, but it's actually true, mm -hmm. right up alongside some real science fiction, mm -hmm. uh, blended together nicely. So uh, accuracy is just, it's, it's, it's hard to give a, a score because okay. it's, it's complicated. But give it a score. Uh, I would give it a seven. Let's get into some of the science. How is the portrayal of wormholes? I liked it. Uh, of course, we have no reason to think wormholes actually exist. Mm. I was pleased with the way they were visualized, even though we know that uh, right now they're not necessarily science fact. What is a wormhole? A wormhole is, very simply put, like a, like a subway tunnel in a way. It, it's a way of getting from one part of the universe, one part of space and time, mm -hmm. to another part of space-time mm -hmm. uh, via a shortcut. And you described it as a subway. Is it anything like a subway sandwich shop? I've never actually eaten a Subway sandwich. So, okay, this is too uh, ridiculous to even continue. You have to I, I can't believe everyone's eaten a Subway sandwich. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't think I have. That's more ridiculous than any of the science in the movie that you've never <laughs> eaten a, a Subway sandwich. There's a lot of great sandwiches out there, right? There's a lot of, I'm not saying it's the best, but it, sometimes you're in a hurry and you gotta have Subway. Nah, Dr. Johnson, <laughs> this calls all of your reasoning into question. Um, okay, let's continue though. How was the depiction of black holes? I also like that. Now, black oh. holes we know uh, out there, major parts of our What of if our I universe. called bullshit? You could do that, but that won't stop them from being out there. Okay. One of the big questions is, how do they really look if you're close up of the kinds that they were doing, this big black hole called Gargantua? Yes. And so actually, Kip Thorne, who was one of the um, uh, primary scientists working on the movie, yes. uh, helped them get the visualization of that right. And it felt really great to sit there and, and watch this new visualization and think that's actually some new science as well. Did the passage of space and time in the film make sense to you? Yes. Okay. That's one of the things people are most surprised to hear me say. Yeah. But the thing is that that's one of the pieces of science that was well used and at the core of the film. Wow. The core of the drama. The fact that time runs differently for people in different situations, especially in this case when the gravitational fields are very different. One particularly striking moment in the film was when they visited that water planet uh -huh. uh, that was so close to the black hole, right. and then they got back to the ship, and it was right. 20 years later. Yeah. Did that so seem potentially accurate? Yes. What? Yes. There's some problems with it, which is uh, the following, but yes. I let them have it. So they had this extreme gravitational well, so yes. it was uh, one hour is however many years. Yes, or seven years. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. So that was great. The only problem is, is that um, to get out of that gravitational well would have taken them using a, a, a ship of such in incredible um, uh, acceleration to get off. Yes. They wouldn't have had that. You'd have to blast your engines f with more energy, th more energy than I think they had on that ship. But they go. got off the thing. Yeah. They got but, off the thing. So maybe they did, they just didn't show that. Yeah. Yeah, because it was already almost three hours, so they need to cut Oh yeah, yeah, no, long, yeah. long movie. But the point is, is that yes, um, the gravitational time dilation happens, it's a real thing. Wow. It happens here too. All right, now you're pulling my leg. No, I'm not. Okay, well, how does it happen here? Remember what I said is you need a, you need a variation in the gravity, you need a gravitational well. So gravity yes. here on the surface of Earth yes. is stronger than it is further, say, up in orbit. Oh. So astronauts up there are actually aging slightly faster than we are down here. It's not as extreme as for the gravitational situation in Interstellar, so right. we're talking micro fractions of a second difference in time per year. Uh, so, you know, they're not going to notice it, but it's measurable. What was the deal with the giant bookcase? Uh, well, what do you want to know exactly? What was up with it? Where was he? What was that a depiction of? So that was the, uh, that was the part where we went into full-on science fiction 
using, gobbledygook. Using some BS. ideas that some of us play with in our research. Might um, we also call it nonsense? I would prefer to call it highly speculative. Okay. I think the idea was that what he saw when he went into that place, whatever it was, the bookcase, uh, was was guided by his own desires, his own hopes, his own psychology. So he wanted to get home somehow. And so that meant that that's what he saw. Now you might want something else, like a Subway sandwich when you fall into the black hole. So maybe, so maybe you'd end up in a Subway. Mm. So the idea was that it was guided by But I wouldn't be able desire. to get the Subway. I just have to, what would I push tomatoes off your, the thing? You until, place your order by. <laughs> yeah, until by they wiggling. finally give me that sweet onion chicken teriyaki. Yeah. Um, was that the fifth dimension they were in? I think they were implying that to enable all of that to happen, they were exploiting the existence of extra dimensions, which, as we know, are speculative. If you had to theorize, what could a fifth dimension be? I do theorize. That's actually what I'm paid to do about precisely those things. Whoa! And so one of the things you ask yourself is, well, you know, how, how would we see another dimension? How would we experience another dimension? Yeah. Maybe some of the physics that make us exist is just designed to be only in these dimensions, but there's maybe some other physics we can connect to. We think gravity may be one of them, which actually can talk to those other dimensions. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of what they were getting at a little bit in the movie. They were saying gravity is one of those things that we know pervades all those uh, dimensions if they exist. Mm -hmm. And so maybe you could communicate across those, and then they threw time in as well, uh, using gravitational effects. Right. Like, you know how he was in that bookcase and everything? Could I, like, you know, be, like, behind the mirror in the dressing room at Victoria's Secret? If that's a place you want to go, that's probably where you'd go in that scenario. So you would go to Victoria's Secret or Subway. Mm -hmm. He goes to rescue his daughter and the rest of humanity. We all have different priorities. In the film, McConaughey said that he was in a tesseract. Let me ask you something, how do I phrase this? What the F is a tesseract? <laughs> it's simply, uh, it's simply a, a higher dimensional cube, essentially. Well, so, okay. you know, on paper you have a square. Yeah. Right? Yeah, sure. Right? Yeah. In three dimensions you have a cube. Mm -hmm. right? So just keep going. Add a dimension. I can't. Oh, uh, well, okay. If you kept going. My brain can't do that. <laughs> we're no, we don't have higher dimensional brains that we're using and we go into that field. No, we just have the regular brains, but we, we've learned that you can visualize geometry by slicing. So a tesseract is a higher dimensional cube, and you can sort of see visualizations of it by slicing it. So you see these sort of square cube-like shapes. Gotcha. The, Your the, brain the, is a higher dimension than mine. Uh, okay. Matt Damon. He improperly docks his ship, and then he blows himself into space. As a scientist, how much of a dope would you have to be to do that? Well, if you've been uh, perhaps trapped on a planet on your own for a very long time with no hope of ever seeing another human being, maybe something snaps in there and doesn't get repaired. What a dope, yeah. right? <laughs> um, was there anything in the movie where you were like, oh, come on, Nolan? I was most um, puzzled by why at the very end, for example, our hero had to steal a ship to go and find Anne Hathaway. Oh, yeah. Maybe there's a longer version of the film where we learn that there's some reason why they're no longer spending resources on that. Were you going on record saying that you want to see an even longer version of this movie? I'm curious to know if some of the plot gaps were improved by another 10 minutes. Oh boy. <laughs> so to recap, Matthew McConaughey using Morse code to communicate on the face of a watch from another dimension and Jessica Chastain realizing what was happening, that gets the seal of approval? Why not? I wouldn't have used Morse code. Dr. Clifford V. Johnson, thank you for being here and uh, dropping some knowledge. Real pleasure. Yet again, Dr. Clifford V. Johnson comes in and blows my mind. 
What would you like to see him talk about and break down next? Is there a movie? Is there a TV show? Leave us a comment in the comment section below. And the best answer, we'll send you a Screen Junkies t-shirt. I want to thank you for watching. I'm Hal Rudnick. Hit me up on Twitter. Bye-bye. Batman begins at number six against the number three, Dark Knight Rises. So Batman Begins, I didn't like as much as everyone else. Really? And Dark Knight Rises was a huge piece of shit. Is there one that you would pick? 